Now, I'd like to welcome on stage Guy Taylor, Mr. Taylor. Well, here we are. Um, and this certainly isn't the world that I thought I was born into. Nothing is as I thought it was. You know, everything that seems to be rare. Hello? Hello? Sorry. Nothing's as I thought it was. Um, and I've been fighting in the court system for years now. Uh, and there have been changes, but they've been changes that have been forced by what we've been doing. There haven't been uh, any changes due to anything else other than us imposing our position. And so I'm lucky enough at the moment, I've been getting audience in the Crown Court. Um, my next stage is that I've applied to uh, conduct a trial in the Crown Court, which they are going to have great difficulty getting out of. But uh, I'll let you know as and when that happens. Um, I was only told to come up for 15 minutes, so I, I've prepared some little bits and pieces, um, but to do with a specific subject, which has been going on all day. So, here we go. Well, I, I, when I was in prison years ago, when I was a naughty boy, I used to read lots of books, and uh, I, I referred to a book recently that I'd, I'd read a long time ago by Carlos Castanedas, you know, a, a shaman from Mexico. And he was going on about stuff in there, which I thought is totally relevant to what the position we're all in. And basically, who's in charge of what's going on around us? Everything that everyone said today. It's the government, prime ministers, presidents. And in the book, they would call them the petty tyrants. The petty tyrants. That's all they are. And they can be recognized by their overwhelming self-importance. But... They're in charge. Who operates our system for them? Well, these are the little petty tyrants. These are the judges, the CPS, the police, the council, the social services. They're the little petty tyrants. And of course, they're ably assisted by the people that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. The mini petty tyrants. The small fry. The useful idiots. Traffic wardens, bailiffs and the like. Well, running through all this is the, through the, are the threads of common purpose and Freemasonry. So we've got two direct veins running through all this. And it's like two Italian families running a casino or two separate families. They might be in battle with each other, but they're certainly not going to let anyone else set up camp in there. And so this is the tapestry of tyranny. And what it's trying to do, it's trying to... Uh, sow us all as victims, but into the stitching of this. But what we've tended to find recently, and a, and a lot recently, and this is why I'm so happy to see this place fill up, is I've come across hundreds and thousands of victims over the years, and, you know, a victim myself. But the victims can be differentiated between the warriors. There's people who get a warrior spirit in them. And when they realize they've they're not going to buckle. They're not going to fold. They're not going to go away and let you rip them off. They're going to come back. And this warrior spirit. So we've got to turn the victims into warriors. That's what we've got to do. And <laughs> and we've got some here today. You know, we've got Martin Harris at the back there. We've got Paula Parker, her and her husband Mick. They've been taken out of their house two or three times. They've gone back and they've been arrested. And they haven't got criminal records. But it's wrong. They've been robbed. And they're not going to be robbed, so they're standing up for their right. They're warriors. And maybe that's what it's all about. Maybe this is why we have to be victims before we can become warriors. A bit like a, you know, a caterpillar turning into a, into a butterfly. Maybe this is the chrysalis period. Well, saying that, one of the people who hasn't turned up today is Melanie. And she's going to come and give a talk today. And Melanie is a great campaigner, and I've been working with her for, for several weeks, as my friend Peter Kroll. She's an educated lady, no criminal record, in her 50s, and she's been giving them a great deal of problems in the courts over school holidays and then people keeping people out and getting vehicles repossessed, you know, which have been done without paperwork, and she's got the vehicle back. Well, she found herself in a position a few weeks ago where... Um, Someone was trying to steal a vehicle, a works vehicle, off a chap, and so she went down to assist them. And the bailiff there 
had no paperwork, the usual. So allegedly, she grabbed the guy by the tie and tried to remove him, lawfully remove him from the vehicle which he was in, because he was in the guy's van, works van. And she ended up getting arrested and uh, charged, and they charged her with offence, and they charged the guy whose van it was with the offences. And one of the charges was an indictable offence. That means it can go to Crown Court. And it was a charge of unlawful, um, uh, unlawful weapon. So, which was a chisel, because he'd been working on uh, around the yard. Well, when we got to the magistrate's court, we went there to help her and a, a support her and act as a Mackenzie friends, as they call them. And of course, when we saw that, it's great because it's got an indictable offence, an offensive weapon attached to it. So, of course, they immediately dropped the offensive weapon against her, uh, and, uh, against the, the other guy. And so the offensive weapon charge wasn't there. So that means you can't go to Crown Court. You've got to have a summary trial in a magistrate's court, which means it's, it's rigged. So that's what, unfortunately, what happened to her. And so the reason she isn't here is because the trial was held last week. And um, for trying to go down and assist this guy, because the bailiff turned up without any paperwork, um, she ended up getting stitched up, which is what you'd expect in the magistrate's court. That's why you've got to lose to win in law. But she got stitched up, and she got a four-month prison sentence, suspended for two years, four months on a tag. So she has to be in the house 12 hours a day and a thousand pound fine. And that's because they don't like it up them, and because when people challenge, educated people challenge their system and have a go at them and start to learn and know what they're talking about and playing their games, they know they're on a loser. And that's why they stitch her up. So that's why she isn't here today. So, <clears throat> what do we know? Well, we know, we know the banks the banks are running the show, effectively, but they don't even pay fees in these courts. If, you, if a bank's taking you to court for a mortgage, uh, repossession, whatever, you go and check out. They haven't been paid a fee. That means there, there, there hasn't even been a case against you. There hasn't been a case against you. It's all been dealt with in a private capacity. And so, they're ably assisted. Who by? By the courts. Well, by the police. Oh, and there's councils and there's social services. So what have we got? What we've got is all those entities, courts, police, the councils, they're all operating in strategic, a thing called strategic partnerships. And if you look at the paperwork, you'll see on there, oh, we're in strategic partnership with X, Y, and Z. So we know what the strategy is, is to rob us. That's what the strategy is. And they operate beyond the law. And the reason they do so is because they've all got things called memorandums of understanding. They've got memorandums of understanding operating between themselves. That means, well, now they're not legally binding, but that's what they're running on. And so we've got these veins of common purpose, these veins of Freemasonry, with useful idiots who don't really know what they're doing. And they're the ones who are full of, full of their authority. They're the petty tyrants, the little petty tyrants, and the tiny petty tyrants. But this is what we're dealing with. And Really and truthfully, we get the warrior spirit on. This is what we need. We ain't going to be robbed. I, I've had someone last week, or, or, no, the week before that, I mean, week before last, bring me up and say that he pulled in his services in a, a, a van that he uses for his work that he's got on HP, and the police surrounded him. The police surrounded the van, arrested him, took him in the back of the vehicle, and he's a couple of months behind with the HP payments. And he said that the vehicle had been reported stolen. Well, let's, if you report a vehicle stolen, they'll say, who are you? Do, do you own the vehicle? When was it stolen and where from? Well, how could the HP company possibly be in a position to fill out that? But the police have still operated and took the vehicle away. I've had another gentleman ring me up, a pensioner, who went, uh, went abroad for treatment and came back and his house had been sold. His house had been sold. Oh, there'd been a, a court order against him and they... they, they Put a chart, all without him knowing, you know, this pensioner. It's going on all over the country. And people are waking up, whatever the, the Trump and the Brexit situation, because we've had enough. We know the mainstream media, they're just liars, man. They're bullshitting us day in, day out. BBC, ITV, Sky, they're not reporting the facts. You go on the internet, in five minutes you can find out the facts. And look, we're all, we're all grown ups, we've got filters, we've got filter systems. We know when it's bullshit and when it's real. We know what the fake news is, and we know it's coming from you lot. Simple as that. (laughs) 
So I've fin- finished now, because I think I've done my time. Pardon? I think Tom's next, yeah? But I'll just say this, right? You know, it's the warrior spirit. That's what we've got to get. It's all right being a victim. And, and you know when you come across a victim and you feel so sorry for them, but for God's sake, wake up, right? This is your chrysalis moment. This is when you need to wake up, right? And we fight them. They won't break us, and we're going to beat them. And that's me now. <laughs>